Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Dee Reinhardt. I am with Illinois WorkNet, and today we are going to talk about a couple of things and then answer questions. I'm going to share my screen here. And just to let you know, all of you who are experiencing issues with youth who have been in a program previously, the programmer has a fix working and plans to have it to test for me to test this afternoon. And if it works out the way I hope that it works out, we can push it to production. I'm hoping that it's out tomorrow, but it, I'm, I'm praying that it is out no later than Friday. So patience, please. This, uh, this entails anyone who has been previously assigned to an organization and you are now trying to enroll them. If they have never been assigned to an organization, you should not have any problems, except I think the email portion is still not working. With most youth, I don't know that I would actually want to send them the email application because they still may make bad choices on the application. So if it's at all possible, I would work with them to have the application filled out on their own. So I truly, truly, truly appreciate your patience to this point and hope you can give me just a couple of more days to get this issue resolved. As far as Employment 101 issues, I do believe we have gotten those resolved. If anyone who had already sent me an email can check with your youth. One of the things that we did with Employment 101, and I have to show you from my profile. Am I sharing my screen? Yes, and I'm recording. Okay, so on Employment 101, if you go into the guide now, one of the things that was causing an issue was you um, the youth were not able to bookmark programs. I believe we have gotten that resolved. Uh, please, 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 somebody check and let me know. And then on, on here where it says rank your bookmarked training programs, what we did was we put in how many programs they bookmarked from each type of activity from each side of the of the bookmarkable programs, just so that if they did not pick any WIOA approved programs, it'll show a zero and their screen will be empty. But if they picked some on public and private training, it will show a number so that you can kind of see what's going on with that. And just to remind everyone, you cannot work as the youth and bookmark those programs for them. They, it, they have to be logged into their own account and bookmark the programs. So whoever had sent me emails with their youth about the training program issue, please check that for me to make sure that it is working properly. And then we went through each of the items in here to make sure that all of the activities were tracking back to the youth's profile after they completed the activity and step. You know how things happen when you, when you find one thing wrong, then like it just cascades down. It's like working on an old house. You, you find something and then like all of a sudden you find 12 other things. So um, anyway, so that's the updates so far with the application and E101. What else might I answer for you? You already answered my questions. <laughs> See, I came on about a minute late. Did I miss the announcement about the application? Because I had an you issue did. last week. You did. So the programmer is working on a solution and I hope to have it out. Um, he hopes to have it out for me to test 
by the end of the day today. So I will test it tomorrow. And I'm hoping that it can go straight to production at the end of the day tomorrow. We don't push in the middle of the day. And then if, if all else fails, if there happens to be another glitch, I hope to have it out to production by Friday. Okay. And that would address the issue I had emailed you about? Uh, more than likely. If it, because it all boils down to if a if a youth was if a youth was already associated with a program previously, it wasn't letting you uh, do the application. I'm also suggesting that you not email it to people yet. Um, I'm I want to make sure that it's working first with everyone before you try emailing it out to people. So hopefully by um, hopefully by the hello, hello D. This is one, two, three. By the third, we'll be able to have you able to email them. Hello, D. I have a question uh, concerning the participants when they are able to create a uh, or renew an application. Uh, participant that is coming in uh, doing a new application for 2022 uh, will will they be will that application be able to connect to their to their existing account so it they don't have will, to do all the assessments and everything over it is supposed to if they use the same um the birth date will be the same, although I have seen some of the youth use a different birthday, which, which I can't quite figure out how they have a different birth date. Um, but if they use a different email, it will track them back to making a choice. I have seen uh, one of the organizations had a youth that had seven iterations of a profile. And so I had to do a lot of work on that particular one. So as long as they're using the same information, the same email address, it should rectify that situation. And that's after uh, after today on the third. Um, so I'm hoping that we have it in test tonight so that I can test it tomorrow. And then it hopefully, keep your fingers crossed for me, everybody. It will go to production Thursday morning. Okay. Tracy, what's your question? Okay. D, um, what, we have some participants that are having issues with start a job and financial literacy. They do all the first three steps and then it freezes on them. And when did you check this last? Just now. Okay, send me an email, please, with um, first and last name and email address mm -hmm. so that I can give that back to the programmer. Okay, thank you. And which one and which steps they are. And okay, okay so wait a minute now. It would be always step four. Have you cleared the cookies and cash on the computers yet? No, not on those two that they were working on. Try try doing that first, then okay. check it, and then send me the email. Okay. Okay? Okay. Karina, I saw your hand up first. I really just wanted to confirm, as of May 1st, we can start putting them on category one. Am I correct? Yes, as long as, as long as the application is working and they've never been... Um, if they haven't been involved with a previous program, you probably can as of May 1st. But if they were involved with the program, there's a possibility that there will still be an issue with the application. Okay, thank you. Sure. Stephanie. Um, the same applies for youth who were caught in the middle, like during the switch over, like they have a profile, but they didn't select us as the as the provider so now they're just they have a profile but we they're can't in limbo. Get they're in yeah limbo. <laughs> yeah i thought we had cleared out all of those people so if you still have 
someone that needs to be cleared. I do have a name of people on a spreadsheet. I do not want to share my screen with that information. So if um, once I'm done sharing, then we can take a look at my list and who you have. Okay. And see if they're on there. All right. Good morning, Dee. I have a question for you. So since the claims can't go into category one until after May 1st, where should we store the new people that are coming in just for the summer only if they're applying for uh, with our agency now? Where should we put them? I wouldn't put them anywhere. What I would probably do is um, leave them in the DHS tab. Um, what I would do is I would come in here and get the copy of the paper application that I put up here. I got to okay. find it. Paper application right here. Right. I would come get that document and I would just have them fill it out. And then you can have somebody data enter all of them. Because I don't want, I don't want you to have the application get stuck. So if you can, you know, get, if you got kids coming in, have them fill out the paper application and then you can just have somebody data input all the stuff. Once I know that the application functionality is working a hundred percent. Okay. Does that make so sense, Anthony? It does, but for the customers that we've already kind of registered online, brand new customers, um, oh, let them just sit there until we get this squared away. Okay. In the DHS. In the DHS, yeah. Okay, thank you. Then you can then you can assign them later. Okay, thank you. Um, Camilla, you said does the waitlist function still work in Illinois WorkNet? It's supposed to on the enrollment side. Is that what you're asking? It's supposed to. Is it not functioning for you properly? No, I was just asking because I know prior, um, especially when we were switching from CYEP over to IYIP, that's what we did with a, a, a good amount of our children. We just put them on. A, you could upload all the information, all the eligibility documents and, and verify what you need to, but put them on wait list. Oh, that's a good so idea. So then you can go back and switch them to whatever category you need to switch them to. That's a good idea. Tony, did you or Anthony, did you get that? You go, Camilla. <laughs> Anthony, did you hear what Camilla said? Can you repeat that? I didn't hear what she said. How are you coming up as Otisha Johnson? Oh, because I had to move up. I had to come over to the office and tell them something. <laughs> <laughs> I put it in the chat as well, but what I was saying is that um, uh, we use the wait list, wait list function when you're inputting and in enrolling the children, the drop downs. She just froze. Camilla, yeah. you just froze. And I'm familiar with the drop down box. When you ask what category. So you can have all the enrollment documentation and verify everything, but put them in wait list instead of a category. So on the, so um on the progress page under the enrollment there's um there's an option here that if you pick the category for them and then um i have to verify the eligibility but in this drop down list right here under the enrollment status mm -hmm. there is an option to um added to wait list i've seen that okay Cool. So now you know what she's talking about, right? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yay. All right, Shivana. So they mentioned, someone mentioned that um, starting May 1st, you'll be able to in, um, enroll those for the summer piece. I have one employer that's looking to enroll a youth that they had last summer and that youth um, completed eight weeks 
with that employer for in July, um, are they allowed to continue in June for the remaining of the weeks? Or, and is that person allowed to go um, be placed in category one again in FY23? Um, let me make sure that Brandon's not on here because he's the one that should answer that question. Brandon, you want to open up your yes. mic? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, can you repeat the question? I was trying to do two things at once and email people back at the same time. <laughs> Employer that's looking to um, that wants to re-engage a youth that they had last summer. Um, in July, that person participated um, and they did eight weeks. Will they be able to, because I know um, it was mentioned that they can continue as long as they don't go over their 13 weeks. Will they be able to go back in, in June and complete the 13 weeks, but then are they allowed to do a category one again for FY23? Uh, no, they wouldn't be allowed to do, um, I mean, the, uh, the number of subsidized days is tied to the youth and not tied to a fiscal year. So it's kind of a, a lifetime thing. So once the youth um, uses up their uh, 90 days or um, whatever, three months, 90 days. We just, we use days because we have days in WorkNet. So once they have 90 days, then then they're done. I mean, they don't have any more subsidized days, no matter what the fiscal year is. So if, if the, so if you said no matter the fiscal year, so if they complete, if they haven't completed the 13 weeks and enroll into FY23, it doesn't matter just as long as from the time that they enroll, they have, they have 13 weeks that they can complete or participate. Right. So say if they have um, used like 50 days, then they would have 40 days left, but they don't get a new start with a new fiscal year. Right. But it can be in a fiscal year. In a new fiscal right. year. Okay. Right. It could overlap fiscal years. Yes. It's okay. tied to the youth and not to the fiscal year. Correct. And you could always enroll them in category two and let them work longer than just the summer. If they do, yeah, if they do category two. Yes, yeah, so it was an in-school youth, yeah. All right. Okay, thank you. No George, problem. what's your question? Shivani, you wanna put your hand down on the, on the call, on the Zoom call thing there? George, what's your question? Yeah, the I had a left your voicemail. I just didn't see that um, our link was hot on the uh, sign up page, the application page. Is it something we need to do? The link, you know, for the agency. On, on okay, so back to that. It was only two agencies that were not hot, and ours was one. And, and I could not find a. Um, a link for a website, so that's why it's not hot. Oh, okay. I can I can. You want me to email you that, or I, what? If you want to email me the link to the website, I will get that fixed today. Okay, dear. Thank you so much. That was it. Okay. All right. You're welcome. All right. All right. Sam asked a question. Put your hand down too, George, please. Okay. Um, Sam asks, what if I have youth who I cannot verify their social or address, or they just haven't come back? Can I wait list them or what do you recommend? If you can't verify, you can't do anything with the enrollment. So if you can't complete the verification up here, uh, then you cannot do anything with the enrollment except except the not enrolled not eligible kind of piece so i'll watch for a follow-up question unless you want to open up your mic sam
Oh, look, Camilla answered it for me. You have to verify required eligibility in order to add youth to a wait list, which is correct. Um, I would give them a paper application, create a hard copy file. Uh, Kate's telling me she owes me a new website link. Good, good, good. So they would stay in DHS youth? Yes. Okay, so you can't talk. So, so Sam, what would happen is on, on the group, I'm sorry, on the dashboard, they would, that those youth that you haven't been verified would show up in this row right here not verified and it's probably going to be in this not verified for more than five days because if you haven't completed the verification once you get past that five days it just resides here so does that answer your question okay great great thanks camilla for the backup <laughs> all right what other questions can we answer for you? Okay, Toby. Um, there was there was one organization on here, and I apologize, I can't remember who it was. That was a Facebook page rather than a website. So if you do have a website, and just to let you guys know, that's what I do when I'm not doing this program management stuff. I am a websites and social media strategist. So if you don't have a website, you really need to investigate getting at least a one page website posted because that's really going to be much better for you. And then you can link Facebook to that website. You can do all of that direct redirect kind of communication networking spider webby stuff out there to help you your organization so d that's what ours was this is george again if it's uh connected to it's a facebook page that's a web that's our page that's what we use is that not allowed or something it's, it's allowed but it's just harder to link to that because believe it or not not everybody uses facebook Mm -hmm. And they can't see it mm -hmm. if they aren't logged into their Facebook. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's better to spend a little bit of money and mm -hmm. get uh, like a baseline website and then use your, use your Facebook to push and recruit and do all that kind of stuff. Okay. But the website needs to be there. Okay. All right. If nothing else for an address, a phone number and uh, a who to contact kind of thing. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Eva. Hi. Um, so I have a not website related question. It's actually like about an employer payment question. Um, should I ask that now or should I just email Brandon afterwards? What, what was the question again, Eva? So I have an employer that wants to pay the intern directly because they need to have them on payroll in order. It's a bank. So they have to have, they can't have them on their like system unless they're on payroll. So I didn't know if there's a way to like reimburse them or should we just tell them that they can't have them on their system or anything? You can, uh, Brandon, you can do subsidized wages through reimbursement or at least okay. you could earlier. But Brandon, do you wanna confirm that? Yes, you would just need to have a worksite agreement with that employer. Mm -hmm. Like, and then you could, you could reimburse them. You broke up, Brandon. Oh, I'm sorry. You would just need to do a worksite agreement with that, with the bank, so that you could reimburse them. Okay. Um, and then we would just reimburse them through... Okay, got it. So then it doesn't have anything to do with you all, correct? You would still need to track that um, youth's uh, hours and mm -hmm. wages spent on them for, for 
reporting purposes. Got it. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you so much. Sure. Jesse? Uh, yes, D. Uh, before we were having problems with uh, putting the case notes in, and then they worked for a little while, and I'm having that problem again. So what I've been trying to do now is try to go back uh, and try to write handwrite some, and then maybe type them later if I get a chance to, and put them in the file. So is I don't I don't know. Uh, is there a possibility we can get that corrected or? You are the only person that has mentioned a, an issue with case notes. I believe Mr. Ward mentioned it before and I was having those issues. And then when this year came in, I had those issues all the way up until, I think it was either February or March. And then um, it started working back for a little while and then it, it stopped again. And I've been typing the notes in, I go hit save and, and it's not saving the note. So I'm having to try more than one time, trying to get the note in. And then, um, uh, so what I've been doing is trying to put some of the notes in my tablet. So if I have to go back and just type them either on words or um, uh, going to Excel or something, just to get in the notes uh, in there. So the when you have an issue like that, you need to send me an email. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, it's a matter of clearing your cookies and cash okay. and making sure that everything is clean when you're trying to do this. Okay. Um, I have not, I apologize. I had not heard this before. And you're, are you with Angel of God? Yes. Uh, I believe the director sent you uh, an email. And it started last year, like uh, it, was close, it was before Christmas, way before Christmas. All right. I, that must have gotten lost in my copious amounts of emails. So I, I apologize for that. Um, if it's still happening, let's let's stay on after this, um, after we're done and I will let you share your screen so that you can show me what's happening. Okay. Okay. So remind me before we leave. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Brandon, do you have anything that you need to say to everyone? Uh, just a few reminders. Um, can you hear me okay before yes. I start reading? Okay. Um, no, I don't really have that much. But um, the uh, third quarter PPR I sent out, that is due um, on the 30th at the end of the month. Um, I did send out a... Um, a new version with that email. So if you're having trouble with it, like some red cells or um, nothing was calculating wrong, it was just, um, there was an issue with like the discharge youth, they were linked to, if it didn't match up to the number you discharged during the period, which you don't have to have the same number of, um, of youth discharged during the three during the three months or the quarter as you would for the for the year to date so that those two were linked and they shouldn't have been so it's nothing wrong it just appears red so if that really bothers you um i can send you the new version if you didn't get that off that group email but that's due the 30th if you have any ppr questions please let me know um and we don't have the uh, continuation um funding notice for iyp it'll just be an, another non-competitive renewal app or continuation um, but that's not out yet because we're um, dealing with the three other new programs we got going right now so that will be soon and i'll be sending um, that information out to you i would say in the next uh, week or two and that's about all i have right now so the question came in from byron Reimburse employer, if the bank is paying the youth, would that not be an unsubsidized placement? Yes, it would, but Eva uh, clarify this for me. They wanted 
the subsidized placement, but they have to pay the youth directly instead of having a third party pay. So it would be a reimbursement. So they would still be subsidized. Is that what was supposed to be happening, Eva? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, they just, it's more of a technicality in the sense that like in order for the student to be treated as in their system at all, there's no, they essentially cannot add anyone into their system that they are not paying. So Byron, does that answer your question? Uh, I'll think about it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Camilla um, says that it is more complicated. Yes, it is, because you have to have that work site agreement. You have to denote who's going to pay how much and what the actual wage is and what the subsidized is. And the subsidized is based on what your contract with DHS allows. So yes, there are some complications for doing that, but other agencies have done that in the past. Stephanie, you're up again. Um, I just had a quick question about um, changing the use email address have we figured out a way for the organizations to fix that or do we still need to email that to you? You still need to email that to me because first of all, there's two databases for DHS youth. There's the, the Illinois WorkNet account. So I'm logged in as a super admin. So I can get to people, I can get to like individuals in here and then I can also get to the group profile. So one of the things that we want to fix, and it's on our wish list when we have time to fix it, is on here, we want to be able to edit this email address so that it will edit in both of the databases. But that's really complicated and is gonna take some heavy duty programming. So it's much easier if you just send me an email and say that this youth's email is now this. If okay. you catch it during the application process, it might work, but I can't guarantee that. All right, thank you. And you need to make sure that you ask them when you do the app, when you add the customer, you need to ask them, do you have, have you participated with any of these programs before? Have you got an email address out there floating around somewhere that, that is already in the system? Because that's going to be a big thing too. Okay. Any other questions? Eva? Hi, uh, last question. Um, in terms of site visits, what's the schedule or when should we expect y'all to come by? Uh, we've conducted most of the site visits, but if we haven't done a site, which agency are you with? Uh, I'm at Project Vision and yeah, y'all, I haven't heard of any site visits yet. So that's why I'm asking. Okay, well, if we, we only have a few left. So if okay. we have not, um, I'm not the one that actually schedules them. Um, the uh, Chanel Dotson with ICOI, who is our, um, works with us, works with I, IYP through um, ICOI. She is scheduling them. Um, I'm trying to look, trying to look at my calendar at the same time. If we've not done a site visit with Project Vision yet, then it'll be soon. Okay. <laughs> Because we only have a few left and we haven't scheduled the next week or so. Okay, cool. I'll just wait um, to for y'all to schedule it. And if no one re reaches out to you by next week, I'll let y'all know. Okay, yeah. And if you want to, you can always send me an email and then I can check with you now. Okay, thank you. Uh, no problem. Emmy, we'll, let's talk about this after I stop recording. All right, are there any other questions that anybody has that we can record? 
Yes. Mr. John Long. Long here. Hi, hi, Dean. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Um, we still have three uh, individuals that we've been trying that had that was discharged from our our summer program. We can we can do that. We, the uh, it was a mutual agreement between our program in the in the in the, uh, in the work site. What we can we can just uh, send a note for termination and terminate them. Do we have to have anything from the employee employer? Did you close? Did you just close out the job, or did you close them out of the system? We haven't closed them. They're still in the system. So they've been accruing subsidized days this whole time? No, no. This is the category one. This is the summer. Program. So did they have a job? Mm, they had it. They worked. Uh, they worked at a subsidized period. placement? Yeah, it was a subsidized placement. Did you close out? Did you end the subsidized placement work position? Mm, no. on, on the customer's career plan. Okay, on the customer career plan. Under no. their, um, under gain employment, did they have like work, work experience or something that was completed? Mm, they worked like, uh, Three, three weeks, three to four weeks. Did you have a step or a service in their career plan that was started and then you ended it because they were done with that position? Okay, I need to check to see if we had closed them out in that. So in the career plan, check. Check their services to see that sure, they sure. A got started, B got finished, mm -hmm. and that their time is not accruing. And if they did accrue and you had subsidized wages for that individual, you need to have added it under the payroll spot up under worksite placement. Okay, payroll stop under. The payroll, you needed to have uploaded the payroll. Okay, upload the payroll and, and put a stop on it. They weren't, we didn't pay them. No, nobody's got paid. You Nobody know. got paid? No, after we uh, terminated them. Okay, and then has the, has the profile of the person been closed out or did you leave them open for this we year? We left them open. I believe they're open. Okay. But you need to you need to have entered their subsidized days and you need to have closed them out so that if they still have time for this year that they will have those days available. Yeah, we entered those days. On the on the service for the career plan. Service or career plan. So I like right, like right here, complete paid work experience. Mm -hmm. You would have selected a goal. You would have added an employer. You would have entered the wages. You would have entered what you were subsidizing them for, when they started, when the subsidized start date started how many hours a week were they going to work? And then you would have updated that customer service. And then when they were done with that position, you would have come in and put an end date, a subsidized end date, and then mark their status as completed. And that's in? That's in the career plan. In the career plan, OK.
Okay. I'll, my uh, person that usually is on is not on, but we were having issues uh, closing him out. Yeah, I is that um, is that Canada? Um, what's um, Johnson, Tammy Johnson. Oh, Tammy okay. Johnson in Canada. Okay, so mm -hmm. I know that I had a long conversation with Canada, and she thought she understood what needed to happen. So, mm -hmm. okay, so. Because one, someone was talking about, oh, we had to go to the, to the, um, to the work site. People, this is no, you have to do it on, you know, in the work net. Correct. Okay, I got it. I'll okay. just tell them to deal with crew, go to the career planning. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, so I know that there were two people that needed to stay with me. The rest of you are welcome to uh, end your encounter with us today. <laughs> um, okay. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day and a wonderful weekend. It's supposed to be 80 degrees on Sunday here in the, in the suburbs of Chicago. So I'm mm -hmm. all excited about that. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I am going to end the recording. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. I will post this.